press the key map button and select timbre shift. Timbre shift will pitch shift the samples and then transpose them back to their original keyboard positions. Rotate your alpha wheel to the left and listen to the effect in the following example. Now let's return this parameter to zero and press the mute one button to unmute the electric piano. Next, let's get bass into the picture. Once again, we will want to copy layer one. Using your layer buttons to the left of the display, scroll until you see one slash two or one of two in the upper right corner, indicating you're on layer one, the layer you will be copying. Press the left more button until you see the dupe layer button and press it. Now press the right more button once and select the key mat page. You should see dual electric piano since we just copied layer one, the dual electric piano. Highlight the key map with the up cursor and rotate your alpha wheel to the right until you see electric pick bass. Next, press your down cursor one time to highlight transpose once again. Tune the bass down an octave using your alpha wheel. Hi, I'm Jeff G. I work for the Soundware Group here at Yongchang Research and Development. Uh, it's my great fortune to work on sounds for uh, the Kurzweil instrument. Um, I'm sure you're excited about this instrument as well as me. Uh, let me just give you a couple of pointers about how you may use performance controls that you may not have known about. The factory presets are loaded with uh, examples of how you can use a synthesizer, but of course it will be years and years before we actually explore everything. But just uh, to um, help open up the possibilities in your mind, uh, maybe I can show you a couple examples of how we use control sources that are different from the conventional uh, ways of using control sources. By control source, I mean attack velocity, pressure, the mod wheel, the pitch wheel, the control slider, pedals. All of these things are control sources which you could assign to change any aspect of the sound. In this case, Attack velocity is controlling how much high frequency content in the string sound. Light touches give you the bell, low touches give you more string. Here's a sitar sound where if I hit a velocity of double forte or more, I get a little pitch envelope. Another control source, the controller slider. Now this can be used for a number of different things. Here I have it used for the filter cut off of the string behind this piano. I have yet another control on the mod wheel, which is an LFO on the resonance. This sound is similar. It uses the mod wheel to engage a layer. sound fit in the tune exactly as you want it to. Here I'll use pressure to do something pretty outrageous. Um, it's actually going to add thunder at the end of the tune. pressure to change the there's one note now if I play legato I'm going to get the glissando and portamento and pressure
pressure can give us the filter cut off. So it can be used for many more things than you might originally have expected. Here the mod wheel is going to trigger an ASR. I have a steady state AM synthesis patch here. Um, if I raise the mod wheel, I will trigger an, an ASR. So you can do many and many different things with the control sources. So I encourage you to explore the factory setups for ideas and change them to match exactly what you want because there's no excuse for not getting exactly what you want with this synthesizer. Now we have all of our essential elements. Let's proceed. First, let's adjust the volume of the layers. Press the Write More button until you see F4 Amp button and press it. Adjust the volume using your alpha wheel and then listen. It's important not to boost too much as this can cause clipping or distortion. Sometimes it's better to cut the volume of other layers rather than to boost too much. Let's boost the bass adjust to 8 dB. Press the down layer button until you see L2 to change the volume of the strings. Cut the strings by minus 8 dB and the Rhodes is fine. If you wanted to adjust it, just press the down layer button once again to take you to the dual electric piano amplifier page and boost or cut. Let's adjust the layer's keyboard ranges starting with the dual electric piano. Remember, you can see the layer you're on in the upper right hand side of the display and change layers with your layer buttons to the left of the display. Find layer one. Press the Write More button until you see the Layer page appear in the display and press it. Notice that you can set keyboard ranges, adjust velocity and delay, and disable or enable your controllers per layer, not just per programming. Using your cursor, highlight low key and using your alpha wheel, set it to C4. Do this also for layer two strings. Press the layer button. For layer three, the bass, set the high key to B3. Now, play your keyboard and confirm the split and layers are responding. Good. Now we can assign layer two, the strings, to the mod wheel and the bass to the controller slider. There are many ways to do this, the easiest being in the layer page. Make sure you're on layer two and in the layer page. Use your cursor to highlight Enable On. Turn the alpha wheel one click to the right and you've assigned this layer to the mod wheel. Play and confirm by moving your mod wheel forward to turn the strings on and backwards towards you to shut them off. Now you notice this way is not very expressive since this function works like on and off switch. Please set the enable back to on so we can continue. Now let's assign the mod wheel to gradually turn up and down the volume of the strings rather than just on and off. Press the write more button one time until you see the F4 amp page button and press it. Remember earlier we cut the strings by minus 8 dB? Let's really turn them down and set the adjust to minus 42 dB. Now if you play your keyboard, you won't hear any strings. Uh -huh. 
Using your cursor, highlight source 1, and using your alpha wheel, set it to M wheel. Next, using your cursor, highlight depth, and set it to 34 dB. Now play and move the mod wheel, and notice the gradual increase. Next, let's assign the base to the controller slider in much the same way. Using your layer buttons, scroll to layer 3. Highlight adjust and set it to minus 42 dB. Highlight source 1 and set it to data. Let's set the depth to 50 dB. Now, when you play the keyboard, you notice you can balance the strings and bass relative to the electric piano in real time. Now let's create a user envelope for the strings to make them a bit less dry. Using your layer button, select layer 2 for strings. Press the write more button until you see the amp envelope page and press it. Using your alpha wheel, you can toggle back and forth between a user created envelope and the natural envelope. Set this to user. Set attack 1 or ATT1 to 1.26 seconds at 100% volume. Next, set release 1 to 2.60. And notice the nice slow attack and release we created. Notice the envelope on the display. Remember, your mod wheel is controlling the volume of the strings. Select layer 1. Press the left more button until you see output and select it. Using the cursor, highlight the top stereo placement map and use the alpha wheel to position it to the far right. Now highlight the bottom placement map and set it to the far left. There are many output configurations possible. For a more detailed explanation, refer to your printed owner's manual. Next, let's press the left more button until you see the F3 POS page and press it. That's for position. Highlight source 1 and set it to LFO1 by rotating the alpha wheel to the left. Let's set the depth to 100%. Now, play and enjoy the stereo panning of the electric piano. If you want to change the amount of panning, readjust the depth from 100% to whatever you like. If you want to adjust the rate of panning, highlight LFO1 and press Edit. By rotating the alpha wheel, you'll be resetting the rate of the LFO. Notice you can assign a controller to turn on the LFO and set a minimum constant rate and a maximum rate, which will only kick it in when you engage your controller. Let's assign a maximum rate of 5.6 hertz, and we'll make the controller the sustained pedal. Now play and step on the sustain panel, then release it and play, and hear the difference.
Lastly, let's add an effect to the whole program. Press the Write More button until you come to the Effect option and press it. Highlight Effects preset and set it to 900 Sweet Hall and set the wet-dry mix to 48%. Now let's listen to what we've created. You'll probably want to save this program, so name it Layers and put it at number 202. This tutorial section is designed to familiarize you with many of the programming possibilities. Next, we'll explore the setup mode. Setup mode is perhaps the most powerful mode found on the K2000 because of the thousands of combinations and possibilities. Before we move on to look at setup mode, let's define what a setup is. A setup is a MIDI transmission configuration which allows the local keyboard to play three MIDI channels at the same time. These three MIDI zones can play a different program, and zones can overlap. In program mode, you can have three layers, but the local keyboard can only transmit on one MIDI channel at a time, but in setup mode, you can have three programs with up to three layers each and assign each program to a MIDI zone. This means you can create nine layer timbres using three programs where each program transmits on a different MIDI channel. Of course, the K2000 can receive all 16 channels for multi timbral playback. When you're sequencing using a setup, be sure to set your sequence program in multi record mode. Also, be sure that the MIDI channels you're recording on correspond with those channels being transmitted from the K2000. Otherwise, you will not hear the same sound played back that you played in your sequence. Now press the Setup button and notice the drop shadow box now shows information about which MIDI channels and which programs are contained in the setup. This display also features the octave buttons allowing for easy transposition, a panic, or all notes off button, which can be a lifesaver in a live situation to silence stuck notes, and the view button, which resizes the setup name for easy viewing. Let's create a setup, and you'll understand this section much better. First, let's select setup 999 by entering 999 on the keypad and pressing enter. The display should show test setup. Notice MIDI channel 1, also referred to as zone 1, has program 999 test program assigned to it, and it covers the entire range of C-1 to C-9, as indicated by the line under the program name. MIDI channel 2, also referred to as zone 2, has program 999 assigned, but only covers a portion of the keyboard range. And MIDI channel 3, or zone 3, has program 999 assigned and covers a different keyboard range. Press the Edit button and notice the top highlighted bar shows the zone you are editing in the upper left-hand corner. At the bottom of the display, you will see Set Range, used to assign the program to a keyboard range, Name, Save, Delete, and Dump, referring to a SysX command allowing you to dump that particular setup to any SysX recorder. Take a few moments now to look at the display. The left column allows you to select the MIDI transmission channel, transpose, and adjust high and low keyboard ranges for the zone you're editing, as well as select global effects. The middle column allows you to select local control, MIDI, or both, whether or not pitch bend and program change will be transmitted for that MIDI channel, and adjusting the effects wet and dry mix. The effect and mix levels apply globally to all three zones, since you can only select one effect at a time. The right column allows you to assign controllers to functions on a per zone basis. Let's leave test program assigned to zone 1 and next select zone 2 by pressing the upper zone button to the left of the display. Make sure the program is highlighted and rotate the alpha wheel one click to the left and assign tone wheel organ to zone 2. Now play and listen to the results.
Next, let's select Zone 3 by again pressing the upper Zone button. Press your down cursor button to highlight Transpose. Set the Transpose of Zone 3 to 12 semitones and play again. One final note, if you wish to edit a particular program in the Edit Setup mode, first highlight the program name, then press Edit. After editing the program, press Exit, and you can rename and save the new program as you did earlier in Section 5, Creating a Program. After saving, you'll notice you're still in the Edit Setup mode, a nice feature. To name and save your setup, press the Name button, and name it as you have named other programs. And then press Save, and select the ID number you wish to save to. User-created setups have their own storage places. The first user slots begin at 200, as programs do also. But programs and setups do not share the same storage lists. Press the Delete button if you wish to delete a setup. Performance setups are an extremely powerful function in the K2000, especially if you're playing live. Um, whereas when you're playing programs, you're playing on one MIDI channel and you have three layers. When you're playing performance setups, you are playing three programs on three different zones from the performance keyboard. Whether they overlap or not um, doesn't matter, but each zone has its completely independent uh, MIDI assignments. So it's similar to having the keyboard of the K2000 three times uh, in any configuration you want on a single performance setup. Um, a couple of examples of, of how I'm using performance setups at the moment. Here are two programs that are layered. And the control sources do the same thing they would do on the normal program. Here's a split. Another similar split, but the top half is layered. The flute. The pressure wind. Now when you're playing performance setups, since you have the possibility of playing on three different MIDI channels at once, and the K2000 may respond in mono mode or poly mode for each of those channels, you can combine mono glissando voices with uh, poly voices. Here I'm doing that. The pad called Symbol Pad, and two mono voices, each with a slightly different portamento time. And the result is extremely powerful. playing on the poly voice, but only my last note on the mono voice. Here's another one which is the single mono voice. Now on the mono voice, the pressure is going to bring back the sound. performance setups, the 2000 automatically lets you release the sustain pedal from the old channels before sending the new channel. So that's how you can have smooth transitions between performance setups. These are just some of the ways you can use the performance setup. Choose programs that you like that you want to set up in combination for live performance um, and you're definitely ahead of the game as an accompanist or a keyboard player for solo uh, because so much power right under your keyboard.
Next, we'll look at quick access mode. This is a very powerful feature for live performers who demand the ability to get around to a lot of sounds very quickly with very few button presses. Quick access mode is a kind of list the user can define. He can say, I want 10 of my favorite selections available at the touch of a button. These selections can either be programs or they can be setups. The user can then name and save these lists and you have up to 100 lists possible in memory. Before we go any further, let's take a look at how information is displayed. Press the quick access button and let's discuss the display. You see the same octave transpose, panic, view, and channel buttons as you've seen in program mode before. Also notice the top highlighted bar showing you the bank number and name. You also see 10 programs and or setups. An S before the number and name indicates this is a setup. Likewise, a P indicates a program. Next to the S or P is the ID number, followed by the name. The selections are arranged in four rows. The top row contains entries 1 to 3 from left to right. The second row contains entries 4 through 6 from left to right. The third row entry 7 through 9. The bottom row has entry 10 in the middle. The entry numbers are arranged exactly as the numbers on the alphanumeric keypad. To select entries, use your keypad. Number 1 equals entry 1, number 2 equals entry 2, and so on. Or you may use the cursor buttons. Up or down takes you vertically through the bank. Left or right scrolls horizontally through the bank. You may also choose to use the alpha wheel or the decrement increment buttons to move forward or backward through the bank. To select an alternate bank, use the channel bank buttons to the left of the display. Notice the bottom highlighted bar shows the transposition of the bank, the current program or setup, and the MIDI channel. Let's explore a quick access bank. First, press the upper channel bank button until you see number 900 test bank. Next, press button number 1. Now press the edit button and notice the display. You see three headings from left to right. Entry, type, and object. Under these, you see from left to right the entry number. Remember you have 10 entries per bank the type of entry, whether it be a program or setup, and the ID number and name. At the bottom of the display are name, save, delete, and dump, just as you saw in setup mode. Use the cursor buttons to highlight the entry and turn your alpha wheel to scroll through the 10 entries until you return to one. Next, highlight type and scroll between program and setup then return this field to setup. Next, highlight the ID number and name and scroll until you see 999 test setup. Create your own banks and name and save as you did in setup mode. Quick access mode also has its own memory for user created banks. See section three, disk operation for a more detailed explanation of memory allocation. Next, we'll focus on the effects processor and create a few effects programs. The K2000 has a very powerful multi-effects processor, which Kurzweil and Young Chang have licensed from the Digitech Corporation, a world-renowned high-end quality manufacturer of digital signal processing. We'd like to take a moment and acknowledge their help in making the K2000 a reality. With the multi-effects processor on the K2000, you can choose up to four simultaneous effects, including stereo reverb, stereo chorus, stereo delay, multi-tap, EQ, and others. When you couple this with the K2000's custom powerful per-channel DSP, you have a very flexible system. 
For this section, we'll use program 998, Tone Wheel Organ, as our basic starting place. Press the program button to return to program mode, enter 998 on the keypad, and then press the enter button. Press the effects button, and let's look at the display. You see effect, where you select the effects programs. Wet dry mix controls the balance between the affected and dry signals. FX mode is the field where you specify the manner in which the effects processor is being used. There are several possible choices for this. Master mode applies the same effect to all programs, setups, and quick access banks regardless of program changes. You'll use the master mode when playing back multi-timbral sequences through the mix outputs for an overall reverb or EQ setting. The effects processor can only access one effect program at a time. Program mode allows you to assign different effects to different programs. In other words, the effect is part of the program. When you're playing live, you may want your lead synth sound to have a smooth delayed reverb effect. And when you switch to your mean bass, you want just a small amount of chorus and slap. When you're using the K2000 as a drum machine, you may need a kit that uses a short gated reverb setting. By sending a program change, you can switch to killer toms, which use a long gated reverb setting. For more demanding mix down situations, you'll probably want to use the separate outs for additional external effects processing. Setup mode works like program mode, allowing different effects to be stored as part of the setups. Lastly, auto, which allows both setups and programs in a quick access bank to use their respective effects. Below the effects mode is FX channel, referring to MIDI channel selection. You can instruct the effects processor to receive program changes from an external MIDI source. You may hard assign one specific MIDI channel for this purpose, or select current, allowing program changes on any channel to automatically change the effects program. Let's call up the test effect we'll be using for this exercise. Highlight the effect and scroll using your alpha wheel until you come to 902 test effect. Set the white dry mix to 50%, set the FX mode to master, and set the FX channel to current. Now play to confirm you are using program 998 tone wheel organ and test effect 902, which is a kind of echo and reverb program. Move the mod wheel and listen to the rotary speaker effect change speeds, speeding up and slowing down. This rotary effect is not created by the multi effects processor, however, but rather by using LFOs. Let's edit the test effect and we'll see how powerful the processor is. Highlight the effect 902 test effect. Now press edit. Notice all the parameters you can edit. Look for a moment at the top highlighted bar showing you the basic effects algorithm, chorus, delay, hall, and mixer. Let's look at some of the other algorithms by pressing the up or down channel bank button and notice the descriptions change. Each algorithm has its own set of parameters which you can edit. Take a moment and edit some of the parameters if you like. Return to the chorus delay hall mix algorithm and stop. Notice the familiar name, save, delete, and dump functions underneath. Now let's highlight reverb time just to hear how much variation you have before we leave this section. Use your alpha wheel to change the amount of reverb decay time and play to hear the change. See section 3, Disk Operations, for a detailed explanation of saving effects with the respective programs and setups to disk. Now let's become familiar with how the K2000 organizes MIDI information.
The K2000 has an extremely flexible MIDI implementation scheme. Let's look closely at how MIDI information is displayed. First, press the MIDI button, then press the button under Transmit. Notice the top highlighted bar shows Transmit, indicating you are looking at the MIDI Transmit page. Look at the bottom highlighted pages, showing Transmit, Receive, Channels, Program Change, Reset Channel, and Panic, which sends the All Notes Off command. There are three columns, with the left column showing the MIDI transmission channel you will be editing. You can send global transposition information, select whether control is set to local keyboard, MIDI, or both. You can select on where program numbers higher than 127 are transmitted according to the new general MIDI spec, using control zero to indicate the bank. Off disables program change transmission. Your last choice is extended a system that Kurzweil implemented in the version 5 software for the 1000 and 1200 series products where two program changes are sent with the first establishing the bank and the second being the program number. Velocity and pressure transmit maps can also be selected. You may use one of the preset maps or program your own. The middle column allows you to turn program change and pitch bend transmission data on or off and the right column allows you to assign your controllers to transmit specific data. Let's look at the Receive page by pressing the Receive button. Notice only two columns, with the left column allowing you to select the basic MIDI channel which you would change when the K2000 is set to receive on only one MIDI channel in poly mode. You can select whether the K2000 receives mono or poly pressure or both. The All Notes Off parameter allows you to decide whether or not the K2000 will ignore the All Notes Off messages. You will need to set this to off when using a Roland controller or sequencer. You can select the method for receiving program changes with the same options described on the Transmit page. Lastly, you can select the velocity and pressure maps which affect the K2000 when controlled by an external MIDI device. For example, if you are sending velocity from an older Yamaha DX7, you would select a different receive map than if you were sending velocity information from a Kurzweil K1000 SE. Now let's look at the right column, where we can set the K2000's MIDI receive mode from multi, which you would use for multi timbral sequence playback, or poly, for use when you want the K2000 to receive on one MIDI channel only, and omni, where the K2000 will receive data on all 16 channels, but only allow one sound to play all that data. Directly under Mode is SysX, or System Exclusive. This control allows you to set the K2000 System Exclusive ID number for use in transferring data to and from the instrument. Next, we will look at the channel page and see how much adjustment can be made when setting up the K2000 to play in multi-mode for multi timbral sequence playback. Now press the channel button. Look at the top highlighted bar and notice it shows you the current MIDI channel you are editing. By pressing either of the channel bank buttons to the left of the display, you can scroll through all 16 MIDI channels. Scroll around once until you come back to the channel one and stop. You may turn independent MIDI channels on or off as well. You may also assign a specific program to a specific MIDI channel. You cannot assign setups, however, as they contain three MIDI channels which are being transmitted simultaneously. For each MIDI channel, you may override the panning assignments that are set as part of each program. Below Pan is Volume, where you can adjust the individual volume of a particular program on a per MIDI channel basis. The range is from 0 to 127. Output Pair allows you to select the output assignments for each MIDI channel. You can select the A, FX, or Mix Outs, or the B, Dry Outputs. If set to Program, the program's output assignments will be unaffected. Below output pair is headroom. You can boost up to 30 dB or cut up to 12 dB of gain on a per MIDI channel basis by overriding the program levels. When set to program, programs are unaffected. 
You'll notice directly across from program, pan, and volume, there are three parameters, all which say lock. You can choose on or off. This lock allows you to decide whether incoming MIDI data will control panning, volume, and program changes. When the lock is on, incoming MIDI messages will be ignored, and conversely, when the lock is off, that particular MIDI channel will respond to incoming MIDI messages. Next, let's press the program change button. This mode allows you to select a MIDI channel and send any program change. The bottom highlighted buttons allow you to change MIDI channels, move forward or backwards through programs, send a program or cancel sending a program. Programs can be selected by using the alpha wheel, entering the program number on the keypad followed by pressing the enter button, or using the decrement increment buttons. MIDI channels may be selected using the channel down and up soft buttons or using the channel bank buttons. This can be very helpful when using the K2000 as a master MIDI controller. Now, press the cancel soft button or exit to exit this page. To the right of the program change button is reset channel button, used to restore any MIDI channel assignments or edit you made in the channel pages back to their original factory state. This is a global command and will reset all channels. This is handy when you're finished mixing one sequence and you want to set up another sequence's channel data as opposed to going through all 16 channels and manually resetting all the parameters back to their normal defaults. Once again, we see to the far right the panic or all notes off command button for silencing stuck notes. A lot of thought went into organizing all the MIDI parameters in this configuration to make your MIDI life a little easier and to save you some time. Now, moving right along, we'll look at the master parameters. <laughs> Press the master button. Then, press the Performance button. And notice the top highlighted bar indicates performance parameters. At the bottom of the display are, from left to right, two buttons, one marked Performance and the second Preferences, and three SysX Dump buttons marked Dump Master Parameters, Dump Programs, and Dump All. Look carefully at the display. This page allows you to adjust a set of global parameters and thus override the program parameters. The global parameters include pitch bend range, setting the K2000 in mono mode, making the instrument a monophonic synth, turning on and setting a portamento rate, and selecting or creating an intonation table. Next, press the preference button, and you can now set the master tuning, transposition, and set the drum channel. The drum channel is the only MIDI channel that can have 32 layers in one program. You can set the master velocity and pressure maps, select the output assignments, adjust the display contrast, and shut off the confirmation messages asking you, are you sure? Hi, my name is Joe Irardi and I'm a software engineer here at Kurzweil or Young Chang Research and Development as we're now known. And uh, I'm here to talk to you about the drums in the K2000. Uh, the drums in the K2000 are all new samples that we've done. Uh, they were digitally recorded. They're in 16-bit format, and they're full bandwidth. And uh, they're quite good. Uh, we recorded some of the ambient ones in, uh, in a castle in Long Island. Uh, so we got uh, some real ambient room sounds, some really natural sounding room sounds that are, uh, that are quite unique, I think. Um, and in addition to them sounding very great, you have quite a bit of control over them uh, with, the, with the 2000. Uh, we have some existing drum maps already built into the unit. In fact, there are quite a few of them. And they match up the kicks and snares and the toms very nicely. These are all ready to play. You can play them as one-layer programs. Uh, and there's quite a number of them, as I said, to select. There's also a MIDI standard a drum map that you can select that conforms to the general MIDI standard layout. And it should work with uh, 
uh, co competitions equipment and uh, any sequences that you already have set up for a map like that. But the really great thing about the K2000 uh, is the uh, control that the user has over the drum. And uh, you can uh, really lay out any, any selection of drums that you want and, uh, and EQ each one of them separately. You can uh, process them as separate drums, give them their own envelopes, their own EQ, uh, their own tuning, um, and their own position on the keyboard. And uh, it's a very powerful feature. You can really radically change some, uh, some of the drums that are in here. And as an example, I'll just play uh, this ambient kit here. sort of these drier tom. Uh, and here's a program that I did that, uh, that shows you just how radically different uh, you can change the drum sounds. Uh, and uh, this program was done as, I think, 15 different layers of drums. Uh, and of course, they're not all layers, they're splits. And you can choose up to 32 different drums across the keyboard, and you can layer some of them. You could layer a couple snares on top of each other. And, uh, and really, you have an immense amount of control over the uh, amplitude envelopes of each one. Each one can have its own envelope, its own uh, equalization, or filtering, or any of the other effects that are available in the K2000. Once you set up one of these drum programs, you can use it as a template. And uh, you can substitute in different drums and, uh, and quickly audition a number of different drum sounds using the same equalizations in the same program you've already set up. So if we start with this kick here, we can substitute another kick or an ambient kick or a more ambient kick. And then you could move to the snare on the very same program. So you can hear how the same uh, compression and EQ that I gave to one snare uh, works pretty well on the other snares as well. Uh, I think this is an extremely important part of the instrument uh, and a very powerful one. It does have one restriction. Drum mode uh, is restricted to one channel only.